further from the news, and it's a bit of a special one this week because we are in a railway arch in Chelmsford. Uh, we're at the Owl House, uh, which is a uh, fond drinking hole uh, of ours, and we're in the middle of their Australian and New Zealand beer festival, aren't we? We are indeed, and I'm looking forward to trying a few more of the beers, actually. Yeah, um, we've also got a guest with us tonight, so the recently departed landlord <laughs> of, of the, the, the mecca that is it makes it sound the, like he's the, dead the house. Um, well he's <laughs> not because we, we have, I'm not we dead so yeah. we have a ghost <laughs> we have a ghost present yeah. on the show um, so we've got Alex is, is with us Alex welcome oh, to, to go, the show um, thanks for hosting us in your back room yeah, you're evening, welcome no worries <laughs> surrounded by beer um, we're going to chat to you a little bit later on yeah. uh, we're going to have a talk about cask beer and the sort of beers that you've been serving here and the things that you've done here cool. during your reign yeah. uh, as, as it may be uh, but before that let's get into our, our beer adventures um, what have you been up to mate oh well, unlike the last couple of weeks a few things steve um both of us obviously went to the meantime make time for it launch uh where they did like um crates and beers to go along with some works of art that had been done by six different artists mm. um very interesting concept however for me i mean the best bit was where they hosted the london event the london launch was in the uh, St Pancras Clock Tower. Oh, cool! Yeah, and it, that was an awesome venue. Stunning Apparently, you can uh, you can rent this place on Airbnb. No, right, yeah. um, but it was an awesome venue. The view out to uh, like parts of Kings Cross and across the station, and looking at the clock tower was fantastic. Um, the beers, it, interesting idea, but they didn't really work for me. But lovely event, mm -hmm. I have to admit. So yeah. fa thanks, thanks to Meantime for the invite for that one. Uh, went to a Red Church Meet the Brewery event on Tuesday um, at Smiths and Smithfield. That was really good great value they did it as a ticketed event but free tickets so able to control the numbers uh, all the beers good solid beers from Red Church I think um, even you know they've moved out to Harlow yeah I yeah. mean they do the core range out in Harlow now they're doing a sour project in the uh, the existing brewery in uh, Bethnal Green so that was interesting uh, and that's really about it for me apart from going to a local a local tap room uh, Wibblers out in uh, out in Essex where I did my first foray into uh, crowdfunding, mm -hmm. so I thought we'd go and have a little visit to the tap room. Okay, good experience. Very good experience. The guys are really warm and welcoming there. They've still got a bit of work to do, but you can see it's definitely coming on. Yeah. And I got to take away the beers that I've been promised in my crowdfunding. Okay, that's, that's always a bonus. So yeah, can't go yeah. wrong really. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Here's, here's some beer. Yep. <laughs> um, I've not really been up to too much. Uh, I, I might finally managed to get over to um, Mason and Company um, over on the uh, Olympic Park. A really nice space that they've created over there. They had a northern powerhouse brewery tap takeover, so they had beers from Magic Rock, Northern Monk, Hawkshead, you, you know, all the usual suspects that, that you would expect to see from a, a northern tap takeover. Really nice space that they've created as well. Um, staff are very knowledgeable, which is always uh, uh, handy as well. So, so that was quite a, a nice afternoon out. How, how many of the northern beers did you get through, Steve? A few. A few? Yeah. Do you mean yeah. all? Uh, most. <laughs> yeah, I was there for a good seven hours. So. Yeah, Steve did all the Northern beers. Yeah, yeah. One of the real highlights being uh, no the the Northern Monk trilogy that we spoke about on last week's show. Oh, they yeah. had the hops version on, which is a uh, a beer that they've done with Epic um, from New Zealand. I think uh, yeah. Epic Brewery from, from yes. New Zealand, um, with a focus on hops. So it was a big double IPA, nine percent. Juicy as, as, as you like, really, really, you, you know, hops in your face type thing. Um, so great beer, and that's just gone into cans as well. So it, it's worth keeping your eye out to see if you can get a can. Okay, I'm gonna look forward to getting somewhere. down to Mason and Taylor himself because yeah. obviously where Brewdog Shoreditch are now is where they used to be. Yeah. Originally, so I haven't come across them since then. So it'd be quite good to get down there. Yeah, it's a, it's a nice space and it's it's well worth the visit. Um, and then the only other thing was, um, I suppose, a bit of a teaser for. For, for next week's double show that, that it's going to be, we um, had an evening with Goose Island. We did. Um, a very enjoyable evening. Yeah. Uh, going through some of their beers and, and chatting with them about their ownership, their history and, and all sorts of things like that. But I don't want to share too much of that because that's going to give away all of next week's content if, if I do that. Um, so... What about what about beer wise, a Alex? Have, have you had anything really good recently that, that that you've really enjoyed? Really good. Uh, I have a lot of good beers. Yeah. At the moment, everything is sort of being. I've had some fantastic sour beers actually lately. The the sour beer seems really really good. Really really good. How about that? Two reallys. Uh, a lot of the canned stuff that people are doing at the moment. Uh, 
Brewers, I didn't think we'd be doing stuff in cans really good. Uh, or most of the stuff, mate. Yeah. Most of the stuff I drink in here is. I was going to say, surely you have yeah. to you have to know the stuff here, don't you? Yeah. Do you, do you have to try each of the beers here. Well, to I need to drink it to recommend things. Yeah. You know, yeah. If I'm not drinking it, the people won't have. If I don't have faith in my products, other people aren't going to drink it. Mm-hmm. No point for me walking around with a cup of tea in my hand when there's all this beer behind me. Yeah, yeah. J- just to get, add a bit of context, though, the pub does have twelve casks available all the time. Yeah, twelve hemp pubs. Regardless also. of having a, a beer festival, yeah. and you've got half a dozen keg taps. Uh, yeah, so at the moment we've got three keg on. Uh, all, way, all our lager selections all German keg. And the, the three craft keg, I think called craft keg, as much as I hate the word, um, is constantly rotating. Might yeah. be on for a day, might be on for six hours. It depends on who comes through the door. Really. So it's quite a lot of testing then, Alex. Yeah, yeah. 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 I, I like someone who's dedicated to their it. role. I, 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 I the, man, the man is, is dedicated. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> I wake up every morning, I come here, I thought, oh no, I'm going to drink all this fantastic beer. Yeah. But you know, someone's going to do it. And yeah. I'll, I'm putting my hand up for that job. Yeah. No. And, and we should probably say as well, we've mentioned this before on, on, on the podcast, but this is this is the home of the Essex Bottle Share as well, which, yeah. Yeah, which you've hosted for us for nearly you, two years yeah. now. Yeah, I can't believe it's been two years. You guys have been great. It's, yeah. It's flown by. Well, it's, it's been great. You, you know, yeah. I'd like to publicly thank you, no, obviously, you on yeah. air for, for hosting Second us. That. No worries. Um, I, I still have fond memories of the evening where you specifically knew we were coming in, so you put Green Devil on keg, yeah. and then you watched us all get completely <laughs> fucked. So that yeah. was fun. <laughs> that was good. I thoroughly Very enjoyed that. that yeah, 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 that was probably one of the best bottle shares. Um, all you do is just put it out there, and you guys fuck yourself. <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty, <laughs> yeah, pretty much, yeah. Well, it That's, wasn't exactly hands behind the back, was <laughs> yeah. it? Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so let's uh, let's talk about the news this week. There's a, uh, a few things that, that have come up. So firstly, uh, Tiny Rebel um, have been uh, granted permission for a new brewery and community space in New- by Newport City Council. It's a 2.6 million relocation and will allow them to create extra capacity. So that's, that's great news for a brewery that at the moment are really making some waves in terms of the new beers that they're, that they're turning out and mm-hmm. some, some of their different styles that they're trying. So yeah, and also they're, they're, they're cutting both sides of the market as well, because obviously after winning Champion Beer Britain last week, last year. Yeah. So I think they're, they're going places they are. Absolutely, yeah. Um, next one is, uh, you may have come across this story, Starbucks have launched an Espresso Cloud IPA. Um, what which, the fuck is that, <laughs> Stephen? Okay, uh, it is espresso shaken over ice with orange pieces and a touch of sweet vanilla to create a cloud of microfoam which is layered on top of a fresh poured IPA. The beer is served with the cold shake and espresso on the side, but they recommend pouring it in. Um, not sure whether that's launched in the UK yet or whether it's just a US I thing. think it's US at the moment, but if nothing else, I'd be interested. I'm interested to try it. I'm Did not you gonna just read the definition in the dictionary as coffee hipster then. I don't think so. Yeah. You read, yeah. I don't no, think that's a coffee that's wanker. That, yeah. 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 yeah, we've yeah. moved on from coffee hipster. Oh, yeah. right. okay. um, next up is the Draft House chain have launched a new bar, first one outside of London. Uh, Draft House Milton Keynes yes. is now open, which I know you're really chuffed I'm about. I'm very chuffed about because that's where my parents live. There, yeah. So I have a choice other than Weatherspoons now. Brilliant. There you go. I'm coming to see you, folks. Yeah. Here's your your grandson. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Hawkshead Brewery have put uh, beer into cans, like like most breweries these these days. Um, So we've got an IPA, 7% American style IPA, with a powerful blend of American and New Zealand hops. And then one called Itty, or Itai, described as Little New Zealand Pal Out. So it's 3.5% version. Of the brewery's um, quite well-known New Zealand Pad Out, which is yeah. a which is a pretty stunning it's just beer. Just slang for Lidl, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. New yeah. yeah, and they they good solid beers from Hawkshead as well. Fantastic, everything everything I drink from yeah. them. Yeah, well, I think I've had so a bad. It's great to see their stuff in cans. Yeah. Um, we we like to. They're, can like, they're beer. like one of the quiet ones. They are. They? Yeah, they just produce mm-hmm. consistently good yeah. beer. Yeah, um, and then finally, it's uh, I think this might be a first for the. New opinions podcast. We're mate. moving on, moving on from one of the quiet ones, are we? We we are indeed. <laughs> uh, Brewdog have announced their plans <laughs> for 2017. So uh, they're keeping the headliners range: Punk IPA, Dead Pony Club, Five M Saint, Jet Black Heart, and Kingpin. Um, moving things into new categories. 
one of the big pieces of news is Hardcore IPA is going to be discontinued um, oh, no. because they feel it's a beer that's stuck in 2007 rather than 2017. That's so 2007. <laughs> <laughs> I know, but you can get your kick if, if you want your Hardcore IPA. You can go to Tesco's and get Mr. President. I was going to say, isn't yeah. it the same beer? Which is essentially the same beer, yeah. Um, they're also bringing back uh, Paradox, Tactical Nuclear Penguin and Tokyo for their 10th birthday ne next year and also Born to Die is going to increase by a whole percent on the ABV so it's going up to 9.5% from 8.5% um, and there's loads of other stuff in this as well which I'm not I'm not going to go through it all um, if you want to check it out uh, yeah just <laughs> brewdog.com hit up the lowdown section and, and read about their plans for 2017 so let's get on to this week's uh, discussion opinions hop Opinions, opinions, opinions. Which is going to be, bearing in mind where we are, uh, we've not done a poll for, for this week's show, because um, we wanted to do something different, something a little bit interactive with an actual barman cool. that, that can talk to us about the product. We're going to talk about cask beer, and um, the question is, which I'm, I'm going to put, put to you, is it any good? The answer is yes. <laughs> why, why Why? is it? I know this is something that, that we constantly have in terms of <laughs> cask beer and me calling it flat, warm beer. Um, sell it to me. Well, what are you drinking now? Well, I'm drinking cask beer, but that's that, because predominantly that's what this place sells. But we still come here. We, we wouldn't come yeah. here if it was shit cask beer. No, we wouldn't. But it's and this, this isn't the just the place wouldn't be here if yeah, we yeah. shit cask beer. It's not just because Alex is sat in front of us, but you guys look after your beer here. Yeah, you got it. You, you know how to look after your beer. Mm -hmm. um, how important is that to, to you as the landlord or the, or the former landlord to make sure your product is in tip-top condition? It's everything. Uh, cask beer, the, the you know, you are knocking out bad pints. You are going to stop selling pints because no one's going to be in, in coming in your door basically looking after the beer is essential to running a pub you can have the you know the greatest location you can have the best food which we don't do we don't have to do food because our beer is so good you can do all these things right tick all the boxes but if your beer is rubbish you've, you've got nothing I think that's a quote that we should have in a t-shirt yeah seriously but it's right though I mean it but it sounds so simple, yeah. but so many places don't do it. Yeah. That's why I can't drink anywhere else. Well, yeah, I mean, a lot of places I can't go for a pint because I'll just be disappointed. I, and also, I suppose you're quite critical. Really? Overcritical? Yeah. Oh, well. That's your starting point, isn't mm -hmm. it? I mean I, I mean, I take your point, Steve. I mean, cast beer, I think that A, you can have, it can just be bland cast beer, whether it's looked after or not. It's plenty like that, though. doesn't make it non-bland. Mm -hmm. um, but you do get a lot of places which have good beer and then sell it badly. Yeah. And that's where a lot of our poorer experiences come in where it's flat, warm, etc. Though neither of those two things are things I've experienced here in the Ale House or in other good quality cask beer you know, beer places, pubs or bottle shops or micro pubs. What I think is very guilty sometimes is the camera beer festivals <laughs> of selling warm flat beer. Yeah. I, again, we spoke about it before with the, the GBBF, but it, it could simply be logistics sometimes, hard to maintain it, not the usual environment where you can keep temperature control. But they've been doing it for so long, you think they'd be able to, they'd be able to do it? That, I think that's the other thing I'll come back to. Is that I, I think if your first experience of car beer is at a beer festival, it may be the worst place mm -hmm. to try it the first time. Okay, so you would, you would advocate people not going to, to beer festivals? Definitely not as their intro. To, to try beer. I think, you know, we, we, we were speaking before we started recording with, you know, yourself and Alex about, say, Great British Beer Festival. It's not necessarily the best place to introduce someone to cast beer. That's really yeah. not. You know, if you were a newbie, I think you would probably not rush back. Not for the beer, you might rush back for the atmosphere yeah, and the definitely, venue. Yeah, definitely the atmosphere. But you probably wouldn't rush back for the actual cast beer itself or look out for it. Whereas come somewhere like this, and that's the first thing is I, I you know, great box of beer selection here. Thank you. No problem. Keg, they put on, do you put on some nice surprising kegs a lot sometimes? Like yeah. that green devil that time. <laughs> yeah. Um, but we always, look, we always look at the blackboard for the cask or look at the pumps. We, we do, and I, I actively, I've got, I've got to say, I enjoy coming here for the cask beer. Um, you, you know, it's one of very few places that I'd, I'd, I'd go to specifically to drink cask beer yeah. because the, the atmosphere in, in here is one thing. 
Um, you get really friendly bar staff. Yeah, they're as, right. as well. not here tonight. Uh, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> um, and, and the beer's good as, as well, yeah. and, and it is a good selection as well. Like you say, you've got 12 pumps out there, mm -hmm. so and you do make sure there's there's something on in, in terms of different styles. Well, and there is a beer for everybody. Yeah. People come through the door like, what should I drink? So there is, what do you want to taste? What flavour do you want right now? And they go, oh, I want this. I'm like, all right, I'll, I will find it in my pump. Yeah, it's not hard to do. I, so, I don't think it. I don't know. It might seem a bit blase or something, but I don't find it hard. I don't. I just wouldn't. If I drank a beer and I got here today, and I and I wouldn't drink it, I wouldn't serve it to you. I wouldn't serve it to the people out there expecting a decent pint. I, I think that's what we all would like to think, but everyone else does as well. I mean, how long have you been over in the UK? Uh, six years. So, ha had you had experience of cast beer before this? Oh, you can't get. Before I started working here. Oh, before you came to the UK? Well, no, there's no cast beer anywhere else. So, what? how did you find it, first of all? Because this place wasn't here. No, it wasn't. I just went to the pub. That's the first thing I yeah. do when I go somewhere new is I find the, the local pub. Mm. Happened to be a Weatherspoons in Braintree, of all the places. And uh, I've been a couple of times and I tried to drink the lager, because I was used to lager growing up my whole life. And I thought, what am I doing? I'm, I'm, in, I'm in the country of cask, of real ale. So within a week and a half, I stopped drinking lager and started drinking beer. And I just went from one end of the taps down to the other. Some of them I liked, some of them I didn't. But that's why I developed my palate then. And then haven't had a pint of lager in the last six years. Okay, so for you, cast beer is a product you like. Yeah. But again, there are still beers which either aren't that great mm -hmm. or aren't served well. Both, and sometimes a combination of both. Yeah, and is that the hardest beer? So, you know, we hear about, like, especially camera, they say about sellermanship yep. and how to manage your, you know, it has a short shelf life compared to keg, that kind of thing. So is that the biggest challenge for you? Is the beer being ready at the right time? I think that I've, I don't do it myself by a long shot. I've got a fantastic sellerman, Brian, who's in every day to try the beer to make sure everything's, everything's fit. But you're looking at shelf life. If you're getting, if you're serving a good beer, you don't have to worry about the life of it. You know, people say, oh, it goes flat or vinegary or what have you, but we're, we're banging it out in enough time. Smaller pubs in rural areas, okay, fair enough. They don't get the footfall through, so sometimes they hang on to their beards a little bit longer than they should. But some, most of these pubs are owned by, by some of these big real estate tycoons, or, yep. and they don't have the opportunity. They, they're not, they can't afford to throw away beer, so they have to bang out inferior product, and I think it's a real shame. And, that, that, and that's what hurts. And that's where we come back to your starting point. Is, is it any good? Is it any good? Yeah. Uh, also, do you think there's... Have you, have you travelled much around the UK? Like, I've been up and, down the co up and down the country, yeah. Is there a difference between, for you, between, say, north and south? And beer, In beer wise, say, yeah? yeah, of course. Um, Essex, like a good, frothy head on their beer. They like it bright. It has to be clear. <laughs> which for me is a bit annoying because some mm -hmm. beer isn't made to be clear and just because it's clear doesn't mean it's good beer. Yeah. Um, the further north you go, all right, so four years ago, the further north you went, the more mediocre the beer got. Um, but I found in the last couple of years their beer's been fantastic. There's some really, really good northern northern breweries. Then you go even further north and they it's, uh, they all use sparklers, but that's a huge debate anyway, isn't it? In, in and yeah. of itself, using sprinkler sparklers. Uh, down south, I find the beers a lot more boring, so down to Cornwall, that sort of area, um, down to Kent, not a huge fan. There's some good breweries lately, probably in the last six months, 12 months, um, but I think it's just people willing to take a chance, and I think the further south of here you go, they're stuck in their ways, and the further north they're stuck in their ways, and they're, why, why are they going to change a product that everybody loves, and they've been bringing out for, for hundreds of years? Mm -hmm. you know? that's I, think, I think that's a really interesting picture that you paint of, okay. uh, of the UK in, in terms of the different styles of beers and we, because it's something that we've, we've commented on frequently in, in terms particularly in terms of Essex mm -hmm. it, it seems as though Essex breweries are quite happy to keep churning out golden beers yeah. bitters <laughs> you mm -hmm. know the, the odd porter or stout but they're not doing anything exciting no they're really not they're, they're not they innovating the in, in any way whereas like you say you, you go a bit further north yeah. or, or you go into London obviously London's massive yeah. for its its beer scene and, and, and the innovation that, that you've got there but then you go further north and you, you do see in some incredible breweries yeah. making some really incredible beer yeah. and, and also if you go to the south, south west say Bristol way 
yeah, oh, some of their stuff is amazing. Yeah, um, Ooh, but really and only got some of them on tonight yeah, as part of the Aussie New Zealand, you know, yeah. hot beer festival. Yeah, but yeah, I mean, Essex, frustratingly for us living in Essex and having lived in Essex for a long time now, there's some really good breweries, but they seem to be only brew a small window of beers. Mm -hmm. You know, they, you know, they're all going to be. Most of them are going to be nice, but a lot of them are going to be forgettable as well. But if that's what the people are wanting around here, why are they going to brew something else? Yeah, I suppose that when it yeah. comes down to being a business mm -hmm. as well, but you feel that if one or two of them did take a leap of faith, the others, some others would follow, and then yeah, it would start to uh, very very slowly. Yeah, it would. You need one, and I don't think anyone's done it yet. I think. If, if we bring it back to, to, to the bar, mm -hmm. you, you do have a range of beers on from all over the country, yeah. don't, don't you? you? You have your local beers, yeah, we do, because yeah. people are going to, you, you know there's going to be demand yeah, for yeah. them. But you do have beers from literally all corners of the country. And as, as, as Martin just said there, we're, we're here this weekend, you've got your Australian New Zealand Beer mm -hmm. Festival on, which is kind of your swan song, is yeah, it? Yeah. It's essentially a yeah. party that you've set yeah. up for yourself. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it really is. Is to say, I thought, oh, well, I'm leaving, what am I going to do? I'm yeah. going to get all the beer that I like from yeah. all around the country and try and drink yeah. a lot of it. So, so in addition to your, your 12 cask lines, mm -hmm. you've got another, how many more beers have you got out there I've this weekend? I've got another 12 well? on stillage. Okay. Uh, so basically the Aussie and Kiwi Beer Festival, we're showcasing Aussie and Kiwi hops. So obviously the cask isn't coming over from Australia or New Zealand, it's the hop varieties. It's the hops, it's the flavours people are really, really digging at the moment. That big, juicy mango, passion fruit, you know, all these sort of exotic flavours. Everyone's like, oh, that's nice. And they don't want to put the pint down until, they, until it's empty. And yeah. they, want, they want another one. Um, so all our beers this evening, or over the weekend rather, are all showcasing Aussie and Kiwi hops, which is really, really cool. Well, I mean, the first couple of ones I've had, very good. Osbom yeah. from Arbor. Arbor, brilliant. And, uh, brilliant. Uh, from more what did I get the second so hop so hop yeah mm -hmm. lovely yeah doesn't no it's not clear no but it's no, lovely it's all right it's good yeah, I started on the I had the Almasty Waimea Porter yeah <laughs> lovely really really, really good really lovely is a really interesting hop from from New Zealand and, and and used really well in a porter yeah I think as, so as, as well it gives it for me that beer had it's not a black IPA kind of no it's not a black no. IPA it's, it's absolutely a porter yeah but there were fruit flavours in there. There were like some dark fruits in there, and it was a little bit sweet as well. And it was a perfect beer, as as, as well. And again, served absolutely. Almasty over the last year and a half, last year, I just been banging out some really yeah. good beers. Everything I've tried, everything they brewed, just turns to gold. So they're the ones from Newcastle. They, they are. Yeah. They're the yeah. ones that Miles Lambert has mentioned a yeah, few times, yeah. hasn't it? Yeah. 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 yeah I had one of their sweet and sour type. That beers. was really good. It was really nice. Yeah. That was. Yeah. yeah. It's like the hop and sour. Yeah. Yeah. Which is their cask version of um, of the sour stuff that people mm -hmm. have been doing yeah. recently in keg, yeah. and it worked really well. It was a different type of sour than you'd find in keg, uh, but you know if you're into that sort of that sort of different different feel, different mm -hmm. taste, I recommend it. So, so Alex, you're you're obviously leaving us. I am sh shortly. Why? Why? Uh, Why? Alex, are you leaving <laughs> us? I've been here six years. Yeah. Uh, which was supposed to be two years. My wife's English, and she goes, "I'll come over to the UK." See how you like it, and I did. I do. I still dig it. I think it's great. Uh, I am just sick of winters. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's the only thing. I can, that's, that's the main thing. I'm. I'm just sick of having those six months of just you know dark, cold, yeah. like depressed, and it's just. Uh, it's it's slowly sort of grinding me down a little bit, and I just need to go back to the sun. I need some more salt water in my veins. Yeah. Just, so you're gonna miss you're gonna miss the cask beer though, surely. I'm gonna really miss the beer. I'm really yeah. worried what I'm gonna do. The beer scene in Australia hasn't picked up as much as New Zealand, for example. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because New Zealand seems to have oh, leaps they, and they, bounds, mate, especially they, the last yeah, couple of years. Yeah. Australia's really behind the curve, and I think we need to we need to take some <laughs> some inspiration from New Zealand. Uh, it's not often an Aussie's gonna say that. No, yeah, you get the, <laughs> everyone's here. We've got that. We've got that. Um, and yes, we're quoting yours. Yeah, no worries, no worries. Uh, what they're doing is fantastic. We've got a fantastic climate for hops, and we do have a good brewing history down down, down where we're from. You know, we've, uh, we're essentially all from from the Isles anyway, aren't mm -hmm. we? So we've brought over those techniques and that thirst for that thirst for a great beer. So hopefully, in the next few years, we're going to see see some great beers coming from Australia. Cask won't work; it's far too hot. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I think that's understandable. Um, I mean, the only thing you could do probably is have our cast even small, like poly pins or something, like mini pins, right? Oh, okay. That might work. But then you're you're brewing for very small containers, yeah. then, aren't you? Yeah, 
and it's not not viable really. So kegs on the up. I went home last year in January. It's a great little uh, great little micro pub, micro brewery around the corner. Five minutes stumble home from from where I'm going to be staying. So that's really really good. Spent a good couple of days there having a chat with them. They they basically said don't be a stranger when I come back. So I want might go say hello, see what we can do. Yeah. Might see them see if we can send some beer over here and let you guys drink some and see what you guys think. Oh, well, we'll, we'll, we'll do that. that. Yeah, 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 we'll do yeah. that. Yeah, you reckon you could? I reckon yeah. we could do that. Right, cool. Absolutely, yeah. Fantastic. Or we'll just yeah. come out and visit you. Yeah. That would be cool. We're recording that's, that bar. Yeah. That would be really, really cool. Just get someone to fly us out there, that's yeah. all. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, yeah, the 12, 12 casts on the stillage, 12 on hand pull, but those 12 will change probably by tomorrow afternoon. So we'll have another 12 on. And depending how busy... Saturday is my actual big leaving party. So I think we're going to go through some beer on Saturday. I think uh, just you, yeah, personally. Me, yeah. Well, I've got a local brewery beer. called Round Tower who I really rate. I think yeah. they're fantastic. They do some good, especially their dark beer. Their dark stuff is, I can't yeah. fault their dark stuff. And they're the first brewery in Chelmsford since Grey's left. Which so is still 40 a, that's years. That's quite a long, a 40 while, years. Mm -hmm. And they're doing some really good stuff. So I know Simon, the head brewer there, and I asked him to brew me something as close to three as he could so I could drink it all day. Brilliant. And he, he got it, Ben on Mark, at three, yeah. and he whacked it full of uh, Aussie hops and he dry hopped it and I had a pint tonight and it's which one's that? it's called Return to Oz okay, by so Round Tower specifically cool. for you yeah, specifically, well, I asked yeah. him to bring me a beer and he, and he delivered so that was really cool but yeah, no, and Simon's a nice bloke he is really yeah. cool so, so, so that's, that's the next festivals. beer we're going to have to try yep. when, when, when we finish yep. this. Yeah, he's done great things over yeah. the last three years yeah and I said his, his dark beers are very good yeah. do got, got a lot of time for those yeah. okay cool well so going back to the original question is cask any good? Um, yeah. Apparently yes. it is, yes. um, yeah. but it's got to be looked after. It's, yeah, there's, there's a lot of you can still have, you can still have bland beer served well, but it doesn't matter what the beer is. If it's served badly, it's going to taste shit. Yeah, mm -hmm. I agree. Okay, well we're we're keen to hear people's thoughts on this one. So if, if you do have any, uh, we're kind of doing this, I suppose, the other way round to, to what we normally do. Normally we do the poll and then we discuss the the, the views on the poll. This right. time we're recording it. Uh, we've had our views and now we're encouraging you to get involved so let us know on Twitter use the, the hashtag opinions uh, and let us know your thoughts on whether cask beer is any good um, Martin do we have a prizes prize we do have a prizes week? prize and uh, this week's one is uh, Sparky Wright a picture of Odyssey Ego Wars which is framed Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton either side of the <laughs> bottom <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah, that's really and good. I have to admit that uh, I thought that was very inspiring. Plus the fact we already know that the Odyssey beers are very good. They're cracking out some really good ones there. Yeah. So yeah, I like that one. And very topical as well. Yes, very, bit, bit very like, much. A bit so. like our show, Steve. V very much like our show. Yeah, we like we like to be cutting <laughs> cutting edge. Um, and it's great the Sparky's back in the competition. That's the first time he's won it for a while. Yeah. As uh, as well. So congratulations, Sparky. You can have a look at that picture. It's linked through in tonight's show notes. Um, well, I think that's about it. Uh, I would just say, obviously, I'm going to promote it again. Listen out for next week's shows. Um, it's going to be a two part special that we recorded with Goose Island. Um, Drinking great beers and just having really honest discussions with, with some of the guys from from Goose Island. Yeah, but the best bit for you, you guys, is that me and Steve don't really feature much, to be honest. The, no, the two guys we were talking yeah. to did a lot of talking, so enthusiastic about what they were doing and getting their message across. So yeah, we, we sort of just sat back and listened to drink beer. Yeah, a absolutely. So um, make sure you tune in for that um, and make sure you continue to look out for the opinions polls every Sunday evening. Uh, get involved in the discussions and also make sure you get involved on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram where you can find us at uh, Beer O'Clock Show. Uh, Martin, just let folks know where, where they can find you. Beer is the answer and all the relevant social media. Cool. Um, and we're really pleased to say that Opinions are still able to bring you discounts from ours by mail. Beer Merchants, Ebria and Hot Burns are Black. Check out beeroclockshow.co.uk backslash discuss, uh, not discussions, discounts. You, you know it by now, guys. Come on and read it out every week. Uh, you know where to find the discounts on our websites. Um, so I suppose it just, uh, just to finish, Alex, good luck, mate. Yeah, you, um, good luck. And it's thanks, been, guys. No, no yeah, it's been a pleasure it's meeting you and knowing you and spending two years drinking in this place. Yeah. So the, the best of luck for going back to, to, to Australia. Cheers, mate. It's um, been really, really and, cool. And thanks for chatting to us this evening. No, no um, cheers, guys. Yeah, cheers, guys. Cheers, guys.